Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another video. A little bit of a different one today. Writing the original demo tracks pretty much weekly is one of my favorite things about making videos. And a lot of you have been asking what the inspirations are, where the ideas came from. Now, I don't know any theory. I just kind of take ideas from riffs I like. So I thought it'd be fun to go through 10 riffs that changed my life and gave perspective on how to create cool sounding tracks. Hopefully explaining how the riffs open new ways of thinking for my own guitar playing can be helpful. You can take those lessons and apply them to your own writing. Uh, maybe it'll be useful in that way. And since we're going through different riffs with different tones, using this opportunity to try out the new Bogren Digital Rainbows and Chainsaws IR pack made in collaboration with producer Christian Cole. He's done work with Aborted, Van Canto, Eskimo Callboy. He's also got a great YouTube channel you can check out if you're into the really nerdy side of like amps and cabs and speakers and stuff. And if you're unfamiliar with what an IR or impulse response is, it's essentially a capture of how a mic'd speaker cab affects your raw amp sound. So rather than miking up a cab, you can use an IR and get clean, consistent results. The pack contains 28 IRs. The rainbow side of things has some really smooth sounding studio IRs while the chainsaw side is really nasty, really filthy, very mean. So thanks to Bogren for sponsoring the video and I figure as we're going through the riffs, we can swap between IRs and find the best one for the job. Now onto the riffs. These are kind of in order but also kind of not. It's a loose order, don't worry about it. Except for the first one. This first riff that changed my life is TNT by ACDC. Yo, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4 soundtrack filled to the brim with bops. But this was my favorite. <laughs> You know, it just got you hyped to nail a crazy trick combo to the song. And it was so simple too. I intensifies. And it was the first riff I learned on this crappy $30 classical guitar. It was like, wait a second, am I a guitar player now? And because I learned that, it finally convinced my parents I was serious enough to deserve a $100 Squire Bullet Strat my first electric that I still have today. But in terms of takeaways, there's a lot of empty space, right? Space where the guitar isn't doing anything. And that creates this dynamism and also emphasizes the guitar when it is playing. So that's basically it. Just because a composition is guitar driven doesn't mean there needs to be relentless guitar all the time. Tactical silence can be a tool. Speaking of relentless guitar though, Master of Puppets by Metallica. Okay, yes, that's a super predictable one, but the down picking, bro. I mean, what metal player can honestly say Master of Puppets wasn't an inspiration? And there's so many riffs you could potentially point to, like this one right after the solo. But it's more than just a relentless collection of cool sounding riffs though. Basically what it meant, theory is a very useful tool, but you don't have to overthink it. You can make something really cool sounding in the metal sense by just chugging low and playing the notes that feel right. <laughs> Like a lot of people think you need to know all your scales before you start writing, you don't. Just start writing. Next one, I'm not even gonna lie to you guys. Alter Bridge and Mark Tremonti are gonna be a theme with this list. Now, Isolation has one of the coolest intro riffs, like, ever. <laughs> Heavy, the picking pattern is fantastic. If you can't tell by now, I'm a big fan of cool palm muted picking patterns, but it's also the power chord voicings in the riff. It's not your standard drop C power chord experience. I mean, I'm playing in drop D flat because that's just what the guitar is tuned to, but you know what I mean. Obviously you can get much more intense when it comes to chord voicing, but isolation is a nice intro to that whole world. And it's another example of how things don't need to be the most complicated to be the most effective. Next one, Rain by Trivium. Like, okay, Ascendancy was just a game-changing metalcore record in general, but Rain specifically. <laughs> was the first time I'd heard picking patterns like that combined with octaves in the same riff. And it was like, what the f that's a thing you can do? That picking pattern is one I've stolen a lot. One of the greatest warm up riffs of all time too. Next one, also Metallica, but from the load reload era. Fuel, the bridge riff right before the solo. <laughs> so heavy, 
yet so simple. Like up until then, I thought Metallica, Master of Puppets, Justice, to be heavy, you needed to be fast. There needed to be a lot of notes. And then Fuel was like, nope, you just need chugs and a f load of attitude. <laughs> Next one, okay bro, Mark Tremonti's tunings are nuts. I do not envy the guitar tech at all who has to make sure that there is a main one and a backup every time they go on tour. But anyways, Still Remains, that is a fun one. first heard it I thought it was a seven string riff but it's not they basically take the lowest string and drop it to a B so it's like you're using a seven string minus the low E you skip that string so with that low B you can get some really heavy sounding riffs but it still feels like you're playing a six string so it feels more natural for like leads and stuff I think Zach Wilde does it too and I've come across it a lot more since then but still remains was the first one that I tried to learn that had that tuning and it blew my mind If you're stuck, give that tuning a try. It is so, so much fun. Next one, Step Up by Maylene and the Sons of Disaster. I love Maylene. They're like one of my favorite Southern metal bands. They really lean into the Southern rock vibe. And they had a few songs before Step Up that did this, but Step Up, that main riff with a ton of distortion and slide guitar. <laughs> Right there, my mind was blown. Like, why is this so underutilized? Slide guitar and metal. It just makes so much sense and it sounds so cool. Next, and I think this is gonna be one of the more surprising ones on the list, that intro to Get Free by The Vines. That extended picking bend as a main riff, it creates this uh, tension. It's like a slingshot being pulled back or climbing that first hill on a roller coaster. And it just makes those simple power chords at the end hit harder. So the takeaway here is you can do things like that. Use tension to keep people engaged and interested in where your riff is going next. Next one, dude, Lamb of God. Honestly, there were so many riffs I could have gone with, but the one that stuck with me the most is Pathetic off of Sacrament. <laughs> What's fun about this one is, yeah, the picking pattern is really cool, but also that you're covering a ton of distance on just one string. And you could play those notes on a higher string, but the timbre you get from only using that low D is super ballsy. So it's pretty funny, you get a ton of hater comments like, you know there's more than just one string, right? <laughs> Yeah, but like, have you tried only using the one? It sounds super f***ing cool. And the last one I wanted to share with you guys is All That I Got by Tremonti. Again, this was a riff that opened up a whole new world with a very different tuning. <laughs> Mark Tremonti is using this crazy, basically two note tuning. On the bass strings, it's B, F sharp, B. So it's your basic drop B tuning. Then F sharp and the two highest strings are tuned to the same high B. So it's like this super open tuning and you've got that 12 string shimmer effect. <laughs> And this is probably my favorite type of tuning right now because 
well, I mean, it sounds incredibly beautiful, but it's also like playing guitar on easy mode. Like you can play anything and add that high B accent for flavor or just to make it sound fuller. <laughs> And if you get nothing else from this list, probably one of the easiest ways to get unstuck, uh, to find inspiration when you're writing, change the tuning. It feels fresh. It feels like, I don't know, opening up a whole new world of musical possibilities on the instrument. That sounds really corny, but that's actually how I feel about it. So those are 10 riffs that changed my life and I still use today for riff writing inspiration. I'd love to know if you found any of those interesting or if you're gonna try them. And I'd also love to know which riffs changed your life, which ones you still carry with you in your head for inspiration. Of course, thanks to Bogren Digital for sponsoring the video. Check out their Rainbows and Chainsaws IR pack, link in the description, as well as Signal Chain, Patreon, merch, Discord server, and social media links. As always, thanks so much for watching. You've been awesome, and I'll see you for the next video.